Hi everyone and welcome to my studio. Diane here and today, another blustery spring day in Brittany, I'm going to paint <clears throat> and draw one of the few pl uh, plants that is thriving so far this year and that's a lovely pink geranium. And I'm going to do this as a line and wash. So um, here is my beginning preliminary sketch where I'm just trying out my pen and uh, trying to figure out what color I'm going to use for the flowers. And uh, I've got a, a Faber-Castell watercolor pencil here from my set in this rather nice pink color. And uh, I think I'm going to be using a, a Stettler pigment liner. This is a 0.8 millimeter nib. And um, I'm probably going to use mostly um, Chevening and Rose, which is Quinacridone Rose, which when it's diluted down looks like this, so it's quite pretty and pale. I might add a little bit of Quinacridone Gold into it to just give it a slightly more orangey tint, but I may or may not. Um, and then the leaves, I'm going to probably base that on um, sap green with uh, quinacridone gold as highlights and so on and so forth. And uh, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to uh, do the drawing. And uh, this is a piece of sketch paper here and I was just um, practicing the shapes. So I'm going to move from that onto my piece of watercolor paper now. Now I, um, I think this is a, a good exercise if you want to um, just do something meditative on a Sunday afternoon um, and not to put too much stress on yourself as far as performance goes um, because art is all about relaxation in this day and age. So I'm going to basically doodle these, uh, these lines. I'm not going to try to create a masterpiece. Um, but I'm going to just doodle the lines and I'm looking at my um, flower example, which is one that's growing in the garden. And uh, the petals are obviously all coming from the center. That goes without saying. And they are irregularly shaped, but they are basically teardrop shape, I would say. And um, if you do this with broken lines, you're going to get a, a very different effect from the illustrators. Um, effect that some people go for. It's a much more, um, um, I don't know what to say artistic, but it is less of an illustration and more of a drawing or whatever you want to call it. So underneath that flower on my um, pot, in my pot on my desk, there's then a bunch of the next lot of flowers that are going to come and they're all kind of hanging together underneath there. So they're kind of falling down in a sort of bunch like that. And then we've got the stem coming out and we'll probably want to put a leaf here. Uh, I can't draw um, geranium leaves without thinking about my long distant um, school days in biology at the school. I went to an English grammar school in Kent and uh, that will mean something to people, English people on here. Um, Chislehurst and Sidcup, wouldn't it be funny if there was somebody else on here who'd been to the same school as me? That would be wonderful. Um, anyway, we had obviously biology lessons and when we did the botany side of things, um, geraniums figured very uh, highly in, <laughs> in the curriculum. They were considered to be a, a pretty much bomb-proof kind of plant. You could do anything with a geranium and it would not object. So uh, I always think of um, my biology teacher and the biology lab and, and so on and so forth when I look at my geraniums, which I love to have growing in the garden here. They grow very well. They're very hardy, in other words, to get to the point that I was trying to make there. They're very hardy and very pretty and they go on and on and on and, and they will last for a couple of years. They'll even survive a winter if you take a little bit of care of them. We lost our last year's ones this year. They 
they seem to die, but I think that was my fault for not putting them in the greenhouse. And the reason we didn't put them in the greenhouse was because the greenhouse didn't have a great deal of glass in it, so <laughs> there wasn't much point. We had a very, very hard winter here. Okay, so these flowers are coming off of the stem as it gets a little bit thicker down here. And uh, the, the leaves are interesting because they're very serrated. Uh, well, are they serrated? They're very, I don't know, um, gathered. They're almost like gathered up. They've kind of got a lot of shape to them. And uh, I'm kind of making this up as I go along. It's not um, a, a direct representation of the plant I have in front of me. It's just going to be a geranium in a pot in a loose interpretative style and I think we need another flower here. We've had a, a heck of a morning. I meant to come up and start painting um, after breakfast and I suddenly found myself distracted into the, uh, the barn where I needed to do some clearing up and some work so I've been doing that this morning and, and now it's lunchtime and I haven't started to cook the lunch so oh my god a woman's work is never done honey okay so that's that and now we have to put this plant into a pot so we're going to paint a First of all draw, but then afterwards paint a flower pot, so let's put that in and let's make it come right down to the bottom and maybe, I think this one's got a design on it, yeah there we are, it's got a, this, this pot has got a design of a leaf on it, so I'll just copy that. and there's obviously earth in here. There we are then, so that's the sketch. Super quick, super simple. And I'm going to pick up now my uh, number seven, is this a number seven? I think it is, yes, a nice new uh, watercolor brush. And there's a couple of different ways that we can um, paint these um, flowers. We can wet the petals all at once in the first place and we can um, come in with our um, with our colour and we can drop it into the centre and let it bleed out like that and then maybe we might want to touch some colour to the edges. These flowers are um, pink all over but obviously they're darker in some parts than others so I'll let that sit for a second and then I'll come in with some darker pink into the middle and let that bleed as well. Um, the other way that you can do it, of course, is just to paint dry, wet on dry. So just drop the paint in to the flower and then pick up a little bit more pink and drop that into the centre, which is also very effective. And you might want to also put some little dabs around the outside like that and let that bleed. So, and then the little buds, they are kind of pink um, at the ends. So before I put the green in, I might just go in with some pink there to just to start them off. It's not so much on some of those. I quite like this way. I think I like that way better than that way. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a mixture, but I'm going to do these ones here like that way. And um, it's always a good idea to vary the colour that you're going to, to use. So I've added a tiny bit of blue to these ones and then I'm just going to soften them up and drag that down. And then maybe I might put a little bit of blue on there to link the two together. And, um, and we have this one here which we'll make lighter. And then we'll put, again, drop some pink into the centres there. 
So there are different ways, there's no right or wrong way, and I don't see anything wrong with using more than one technique in the same painting. Um, as long as you, I think you probably want to have more of one than another, but a little bit of variety never did any harm. Now the insides of these flowers, there's not really much in the way of yellow on the inside, um, so I'm not going to not going to bother about that. Maybe I might do one of them in um, Potter's Pink, which is it's a granulating pink, and uh, so it tends to give quite a lot of texture. So let's have a couple down here, much lighter, and then I'll just drop in some some of the uh, quinacridone pink in a few places. There we are, and uh, there's one here as well, All right? So then I need to start um, putting in the greens. So we'll pick up some sap green. And just dull that down a little bit with some quinacridone gold. I'm keeping this very, very simple and very light. This is uh, not going to have a great deal of detail because it is actually a line and wash. So when we want to do the um, the leaves, we just want to remember that part of the leaves are going to be dark, part is going to be light. There will be some areas that will have some some yellow. So we'll put some quinacridone in there to give it a bit of a lift. And uh, down here we've got, let's try dropping in some yellow and then next to that some green. There's another leaf here. I think I don't want to um, paint the earth a brown colour. I think I'm going to just kind of um, make the, the inside of the pot a more attractive colour. So I'm going to just do it in grey. And this is actually Caribbean blue mixed with Potter's pink, giving us a nice soft grey and then a little bit of potter's pink mixed with quinacridone gold is going to give me a soft uh, brownish kind of shade for the top of the pot. So we'll just drop that in around there. Whoops, I've missed a bit of the leaf. It wants to come down there, doesn't it? So, yeah, so very lightly, not what you would call um, detailed or anything like that, imagining that the light is going to be coming from the front and we're going to then sketch in the two leaves on the um, front of the pot there. Totally depending on the, the attractiveness of the colours here to give a painting that's worth looking at and we won't go any further down the pot than that. Um, I think probably I want to drop some blue into this to make it harmonise more with the rest. Because although on my pot that part of it is um, beige, it's... yeah. There we are. Okay, so then back up the top here we we'll just put a little bit into the centre of that flower, maybe a few little dashes down here, just to give it a bit more body. Uh, 
and um, And a few leaves out here that haven't got any ink on them, just, just because. And I think, I actually, I think, I think, I could be wrong, but I'm thinking I would quite like another flower up here. What do you think? And shall we extend this out here a little bit? Have another leaf? And maybe another flower down here. Maybe indication of the flower down here, and another way you can do it, of course. Okay, I think I'll let that dry and uh, see where that ends up. I think that's pretty much it. One geranium. Thanks very much for being here. Give me a like and subscribe if you feel like it. Don't forget to click notifications um, if you want to know when things are coming up. So thanks for all your lovely comments and all your support. And I'll say goodbye for now and see you again soon. So bye bye everybody. Bye bye.